Hey everybody and welcome to a, another episode. In this episode, I am going to complete my review. This is my long-term review of the Maxxis Shorty Tire. Like I do with all my reviews, I actually kind of just like to start with getting right to the point. I like this tire. This is a great tire. Um, I will totally buy this tire again. So there you have it. You don't need to watch the rest of the video. All right, so I guess you're gonna stick around and find out why I like it. So here's what I like about this tire. And so um, let's go in, into that. So first up, um, it's important to note that when I did this change, I didn't change just the tire, but I also changed the rim. And I changed specifically from a 23 millimeter to a 26 millimeter inside diameter. That'd be the inside of the rim. And I know that doesn't sound like a big change, but it is a big change. The reason is that a wider wheel set allowed for a proper tire seal at a lower PSI, especially with these 2.5 inch tires. Lower pressure essentially equates to an increase in traction. So any observations that I make in the rest of the video should be equally attributed to both the change in wheels and the change in tires. You might not have nearly as dramatic or noticeable changes as I experienced if you're simply just changing out your tires. Uh, so just putting that out there. Next up, this is a follow-up to my initial thoughts video. So it's a part two. Um, in part one, I did a uh, real in-depth review of the tires when I bought them. And uh, so this is about five or 600 miles later. Um, approximately a year, I actually rode these tires out for a whole year and uh, I've <laughs> rode them way longer than I should have because I have had a lot going on and haven't had a chance to actually change them out. So I'm now doing that and, um, and you can check that out again in the link in the description. Um, there's a comparison in that video to a lot of other tires just to check out uh, how the tires responded and you know, equal air, you know, they were all equal air pressures and just how the, how the tires felt and looked and what my thoughts were going to be. So check it out. And on that note, let's uh, let's take a close look at this tire and just uh, the general wear and tear. Um, the back, when compared to the front, definitely because I didn't I didn't rotate them or anything like that. The back definitely it is in much rougher shape, and it's just something I know in my ride style. I'm a lot heavier on my rear. Um, the sidewalls, particularly on the back, um, took a real beating. Um, in the last uh, month, I've actually had to put stands in, lay the bike on the side on the side, and then spin the uh, spin the tires around to get stands on the sidewalls because the sidewalls actually started leaking um, really bad. These technical trails that I ride in the East Coast, um, there's a lot of rocks and especially on the climbs, you're going to climb through everything. You're going to slip off the rocks and the sidewalls catch uh, catch up quite a bit of uh, a, abrasion that they wouldn't normally take if you're like riding in the Midwest on a trail that was just smooth, loamy, you know, sand and, and uh, dirt like they have in that area. So um, as far as the actual wear and tear on the, on the back tire, the center knobs are worn down significantly. There is a lot of um, cracking on the sidewalls were worn to the, the treads. Again, this is 600 miles of pretty heavy technical riding. Um, on the rubber outer knobs, they're all split approximately where they meet with the, uh, with the actual tire wall itself. Um, so that's, you know, for five or 600 miles for as, as, uh, squishy and soft as these tires are, I'm actually really impressed at how they held up, um, when compared to, uh, compared to a lot of other, uh, tires that I've used. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. Um, there's a lot of cracking, um, on the side walls and particularly on the rear. The front is, uh, is in much better shape, but it's, it's still, it really should have been replaced probably 200 miles ago. I really rolled these things out. One other thing to note too, um, in light of all the wear and tear that we see on these tires is that these are the downhill casing tires. So they're a little thicker on the side walls. If you didn't have that downhill casing, um, I'd probably venture to say you probably won't get the five or 600 miles out of these tires that I did. Um, really, I probably shouldn't have gone much past 300 miles with these tires. So I really, I really abuse these and push them to, them to the limit. And uh, quite frankly, um, they took it. They're great tires. I just, I, I really am totally impressed by this tire. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the aspects of this tire. Um, first up, the one thing I absolutely noticed right off the bat was the sound. So um, all I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna play a video. And that is what it sounds like when you're riding this thing. Um, obviously, I just played a part that was uh, was on pavement. 
um, it's going to definitely be louder on pavement, but it still had a pretty significant sound profile when you were riding on, uh, on dirt. So uh, it's noticeably louder than most tires. Okay, so next up, I'm going to talk about the cornering. Um, there are a number of times where I came out of a turn that uh, normally I would have uh, taken my foot out uh, motocross style. And as I went through the turn, I noticed that uh, I wasn't doing that. So um, I definitely got really comfortable and confident in, uh, in, the, in the cornering with these tires. And I'm totally going to attribute that to the tire and not the wheel set. So let's switch gears. Let's, uh, let's talk about trail conditions. Um, I rode these tires in a whole lot of trail conditions in the five or 600 miles that I rode them. Um, and first up on my list is going to be sand. Um, sand is a tough nut to crack and uh, I don't know of any tire that's particularly great on sand. Um, so I know of a couple of spots that I remember riding and just did not feel confident as opposed to the one I was talking about the cornering. Um, I rode in um, northern Michigan in Boyne Highlands and uh, the conditions there are a kind of mixture of really great loam and then sand as you get lower on the hills um, and, and that's just a part of the geology of that uh, particular part of the state of Michigan. Michigan. Um, it was not confidence inspiring. Another uh, situation uh, that I recall was riding in uh, California on the Noble Canyon Trail and uh, there was a couple of spots that were sandy on that and uh, as I came into a sand uh, area it just kind of dug in and the front tire turned on me and pff, over the handlebars type situation or well, I think actually it was a low side but anyways uh, these are not great tires on sand and honestly I don't know what tire would be great on sand unless maybe you're riding a fat bike but then you're not riding the same kind of style you would be riding with this bike. So sand, it's not a winner but I'm not sure which tire would be. Secondly, let's talk about mud. Um, Recently, I went to uh, Dirt Fest uh, 2018, which was really more like a mud fest because it just it, it rained the first couple of days and the trails just turned into this muck. Um, and I noticed that um, my tires did particularly well in that situation. Uh, so I was behind people that had tires similar to like uh, Schwabi's Nobby Nicks, and they were spinning out and losing traction and uh, having to hike a bike in situations where I could just kind of keep moseying on my bike maintain traction so that's not to say that these tires are particularly great in mud it's just they maintain traction in situations where other tires notably didn't and we were all riding in the same conditions next up let's talk about loam uh, loam is that type of dirt that everybody just loves and these tires absolutely shine in loam from a traction perspective um, the observations I was making earlier about quartering, those were under loam conditions. So under loam, these are phenomenal tires. Okay, so the fourth type of uh, condition I'm going to talk about is rocks and boulders. Um, under wet conditions, I don't think any tire is really going to save your ass when it comes to uh, boulders because they just turn into something that's real slippery and you'll slide off. And so it really dependent upon where out in the country. Here on the East Coast where I'm at right now, uh, the rocks, when it gets really hot and humid in the summer, uh, really they sweat from the, uh, from the humidity and they get really dangerous. So um, these tires really didn't save my butt. And I think that's evident by the fact that I had so much sidewall damage. Um, over the course of the, uh, the use of these tires. Under dry conditions, um, they, were, they were great. Um, I wouldn't necessarily think they're better than other tires, although I did get these because they had wider knobs. And I think I need to spend some time riding something without such big knobs on the rocks that I have here to see whether or not uh, I have a noticeable difference. My personal belief is that these tires were, were better than if I had used something with almost no knobs under those, tr those conditions, but I really can't say definitively that that was the case. Another trail condition that I did a little bit of riding on was uh, like loose stone shale pebble type stuff and um, I didn't really find these tires to be very confidence inspiring. I don't, again, I don't think you'd find any tire that's particularly confidence, uh, confidence inspiring under those conditions, but uh, they were something that I rode in and uh, it kind of reminded me of riding on sand when I was riding on uh, small loose stone but nowhere near as, uh, as, as bad. Because when you hit sand, you're gonna have one of those conditions where it's almost like going into snow and you just lose your momentum. Um, on loose stones, you just kind of slip and slide. And these tires didn't have, a, in my opinion, a very noticeable difference under very small loose stones. On that note, let's talk about snow. Snow is a tricky subject to tackle. Um, if you stay on a hard pack section of trail that's been packed down, and it's not got an icy sheet on it, the traction was actually just fine with these tires. 
but just like any situation, if you get off that hard pack into the adjoining six inches of snow either side of the trail, you basically may as well be riding in sand because you come to an almost dead stop. The tires just kind of dig in and you're done. Um, so for snow, uh, again, it's kind of like a lot of other situations. There's not real a real winner when it's not optimal conditions. There's just a little bit better. I will say that the traction with these knobs did seem to be a little bit better in snow conditions. So next up, let's talk about speed. Um, I am not a particularly fast rider. In fact, I'm quite slow. I was not expecting to make any observations or notice anything about uh, these tires when it comes to rolling resistance, given that I pedal ridiculously slow. But I did seem to be quite surprised when I noticed that I was in fact slugging it up the hill much slower. Um, so if you're the type of person that notices rolling resistance from different tires, then this is probably gonna be something that you're really gonna notice with these tires because it's dramatically different. It's enough for th that I would notice it. So if you value uh, speed over traction, this is definitely not the right tire for you. But if you value traction over speed, like I do, this is gonna be the right tire for you. Another thing I'd like to point out is issues and problems. Um, and not so much with this tire, but previously I had a huge amount of issues with uh, burp and just blowout. And with these tires, I had zero issues with that. And that can be equated probably more to the wheel set than to the tire, um, getting the right combination of wheel diameter and tire diameter to match up. Um, that said, uh, I had particular problems with uh, the Continental Trail Kings and Mountain Kings. I did a lot of burp outs with those and I had absolutely no issues with these, but that could be 50-50 tire, 50-50 rim. So not really anything conclusive, but in my situation with these rims, I had no problems whatsoever for a year without any burp out, which is phenomenal. And on a related note, um, these tires, I had absolutely zero issues with any loss in tire pressure over the grand majority of the, of the use of these tires. It wasn't until about a month ago um, and somewhere probably somewhere between five and 600 miles that I actually started actually having issues with these tires. And there was, it was mostly just leakage out of the sidewalls on the back tire. The front tire has had almost no issues. And my front tire very rarely slides off the rocks like I was talking about. So it's really just wear and tear on the sidewalls that was basically leading to uh, some really slow leak in the tires and ultimately the decision to finally give up on this tire and switch to a new tire. In conclusion, I absolutely love these tires. I have nothing else to say about them. I will buy them again. Two thumbs up all the way. Also, be sure to stick around and check out my next video, which is going to be my initial thoughts on the Magic Mary tire. Um, that is going to be an interesting video because it's coming off the heels of these Maxxis shorties. So they've got a, uh, an uphill battle to fight, but um, I actually think they're probably a great tire and I'm going to love them. Am I going to love them as much as the shorty? We'll find out. Another thing to check out, I'm going to be doing a video about the Push Core. I haven't even opened the box yet. Um, these, if you don't know what they are, are a tire insert that goes into the uh, inside the tire with two with tubeless tires, and uh, provides a uh, cushion um, that you can uh, use when you to go lower air pressure and uh, do less damage to your rims or save your rims under conditions that other tires without the cushion core would probably destroy your rims. Um, so I'm looking forward to that too because I do love running really low air pressure. Work hard, play hard and be a big softy when you get home. Hey, you're watching this on my mountain bike specific channel. If you want to see all the videos I do, but like overlanding and how to videos, stuff like that, go check out my main channel in the link below. Woo. Be sure to check out my online store where you can get cool t-shirts like this mountain bike shirt. Jeep and overlanding t-shirts. Mountain bike related t-shirts for other loud and obnoxious Jeep shirts. Van life t-shirts. Cool t-shirts like this one right here that tells everybody you're not a cyclist, you are a mountain biker. And other cool shirts like this one right here. Buy my dad's t-shirts so that we don't have to live on the street.